the gentleman from Florida. Thank you, Madam Chair. Americans deserve the assurance that their hard-earned taxpayer dollars are going to fulfill the needs of the American people, not funneled to terrorists who threaten our very existence. I stood here just nine months ago offering the same amendment to ensure that no taxpayer funds be made available to the Lebanese Armed Forces, a military force that emboldens Hezbollah and their Iranian handlers to spread terror and destruction upon our ally Israel and the entire Middle East. Guess what happened just nine days later on October 7th? To say that Hezbollah and the Lebanese government are two separate entities is just plain false. They are merely two sides of the same coin. Not only do Hezbollah and its allies control dozens of seats in Lebanon's parliament, but they literally sit at the helm of the military force that our tax dollars have been propping up since 2006. Its grip extends across its military, through its government, and over a majority of its politicians. Even advocates of aid to the Lebanese military recognize that Hezbollah's influence over its defense ministry is rampant. We may as well be sending these checks directly to Hezbollah headquarters. Money is fungible, and why should the generosity of the American people be used to fund a terror haven, unwilling and unable to counter Hezbollah? As we stand here today, Israel is in a state of war with Hamas, and all-out war with Hezbollah to the north seems to be imminent. Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah has repeatedly threatened war with Israel while suggesting his force far exceeds 100,000 fighters. We are funding an army that emboldens Hezbollah to spill the blood of our allies. This really should be a bipartisan issue. But where are the Democrats complaining about Lebanon's human rights atrocities? The Lebanese armed forces shoot protesters and forcibly repatriate Syrian refugees. Yet on this issue, Democrats tell us to turn a blind eye and fund Hezbollah's allies in the Lebanese armed forces. In fact, the majority of Lebanon's military expenditures don't even go towards its defense. Over 70% of its budget is allocated for personal salaries and excessive benefits, which even includes domestic servants and drivers for high-ranking officers. This didn't stop the United States last year from partnering with the UN to implement the Livelihood Support Program, which dispersed more than $55 million to 70,000 LAF personnel and helps fulfill their generals' lavish lifestyles not armed Mercedes and other luxurious goods for Lebanese generals. Given the rampant terror financing and money laundering activities that Hezbollah uses to extend its reign across nearly every facet of life in Lebanon, we must acknowledge that foreign aid dollars sent to the Lebanese armed forces will ultimately be used by Hezbollah to further expand its terrorist actions against our ally, Israel. I reserve. The gentleman reserves. I'm in opposition. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Madam Speaker, the good intent of my colleague from Florida cannot diminish the fact that administration after administration, State Department after State Department, the Department of Defense under both this and the previous administration recognized the importance of a stable and peaceful Lebanon. And they recognized that Lebanese Armed Forces maintains force against the, the taking over their country either by Hezbollah or by Palestinians or Syrians or others. I've been to Lebanon when it was under foreign control by Syria. I've seen the Lebanese armed forces push them out. I've also seen the Lebanese armed forces train with our military personnel who in fact maintain close and daily relations with the Lebanese armed forces. And with that, I'd like to recognize my colleague from Illinois for two and one half minutes. Is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in opposition to this amendment. Uh, the, the longstanding U.S. military investment for the independent Lebanese armed forces has worked to support U.S. security interests in the Middle East for over 15 years. Discontinuing this funding now will only serve to embolden Hezbollah on Lebanon's southern border. I'm proud to represent over 8,000 Lebanese American families in my district in Peoria, Illinois. And as the co-chair of the U.S. Lebanon Friendship Caucus and a member of the House Intelligence Committee, I work closely with the brave men and women in the U.S. military and intelligence community to ensure robust and stringent oversight of U.S. investment into the Lebanese Armed Forces, including our special, force, special forces members embedded with the LAF. Let me just repeat that. Every day we have 30 U.S. military uh, special forces embedded with the LAF. There has not been one piece of evidence presented today from our U.S. military that in fact 
any of this money goes to Hezbollah or anybody else. Given the ongoing tension with Israel and Hezbollah, this is the wrong time to prohibit this funding. It would only serve to strengthen Hezbollah on the battlefield against Israel. The stability of the LAF is imperative to the region and serves as an important counter to Hezbollah's damaging presence in Lebanon. The LAF, the Lebanese Armed Forces, stands as an independent, secular force in Lebanon, preventing terror attacks by ISIS, countering the actions of Hezbollah, fighting against weapons and drug smuggling, and maintaining internal stability. They are the glue that keeps the country together. I agree with my colleague that we must be responsible stewards of taxpayer money spent abroad and continue to ensure uh, necessary oversight mechanisms are in place to prevent money from falling into the wrong hands. However, we must not make decisions based on generalities, misinformation, or conspiracy theories, but instead trust the U.S. military experts on the ground who provide the oversight and serve our national security interests. The LAF remains one of the strongest functioning partners of the U.S. military has in the Middle East, and destabilizing the LAF will only strengthen Hezbollah and further provoke instability with Israel. I oppose this amendment and urge my colleagues to vote no. Thank you, and I yield back. Madam, Madam Chair, I reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. By safeguarding the actions of Hezbollah terrorists and their allies, the Lebanese armed forces fundamentally empower Iran in their mission to kill American troops and wipe Israel off the map. Now more than ever following October 7th, giving them any taxpayer funds from America is just simply unjustifiable. I encourage my colleagues to stand with our ally Israel and recognize the dangers of funding the Lebanese armed forces by voting for my amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from California is recognized. Madam Chair, I, I would inquire if the uh, proponent is prepared to close. To close. Then I'll, I'll use such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you. Madam Chair, as a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee for over 20 years, I've traveled the entire region, met with our leaders, including our leaders in Israel, met with the Mossad chief, met with many. And what they've all told me is that a stable Lebanon is important and a civil war in Lebanon would lead to the chaos that caused Israel to have to invade Lebanon many years ago at a great loss of life. The fact is we have troops in Syria because Syria is effectively in a civil war. We have support for the LAF because the LAF stands as the only force that keeps Hezbollah from taking over that country on behalf of, as a proxy for Iran. I continue to stand with Israel. I continue to stand against Iran. And to do so, I continue to stand with support for the LAF and the stability that it brings to Lebanon. Only a few weeks ago, General Aoun, the commander of the Lebanese Armed Forces, was invited here where he met with our Secretary of State, where he met with our Secretary of Defense, and where, in fact, the coordination between our two countries has never been stronger. And for that reason, I must oppose this amendment and hope that it will not be brought again because it is not in the best interest of America or its key ally in the region, Israel. With that, I yield back. Gentleman yields. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Hezbollah's influence on the Lebanese armed forces is rampant. Uh, they have members of their parliament. The influence is, is overreaching. And Americans are sick and tired of sending our tax dollars to countries and to people that absolutely hate our values and hate America and hate our allies, Israel. Why would we continue to fund uh, uh, monies like Lebanon? Why would we continue to fund, quote unquote, humanitarian aid to Gaza when we know that all that money is going to Hamas? The American people are sick and tired of it. The American people want this body and this house to put America first. And I think it starts with focusing on the challenges that face America and not giving money that is ultimately going to end up in the hands of terrorist organizations, and I yield back. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from Kansas. The question is on the amendment offered.